Welcome back to Baruto Anime Review, episode 132. This one I'm viewing the 33rd episode of Baruto Naruto Next Generations, A Village Without Sasuke, and its 40th chapter of the manga, The Invisible Jutsu. Yep. Yeah, I'm covering the manga one as well, because why not? I mean, the chapter itself was only released just two days ago, and why not do a review with this episode? Yeah, I mean... The next one's coming out not until next month. Mm -hmm. First, let's talk with this newest episode of the anime. Where it kind of picks how we last left off. We have Baruto arriving train with Naruto for a little while. And then Sakura comes by because she picks up something from the last week's episode. I thought it was a picture that she picked at Joppa Sasuke's possible, but no. It was a letter from our future daughter. Of course, Baruto knows what the letter is. But he has to basically lie about it because of course the letter mentions Sasuke and of course mentioning Sadara. And doesn't mention like who was Sadara. It's like, does do you know someone named Sasuke? Do you know Sasuke? Yeah, like, no, it must be different Sasuke. And of course he doesn't know about the their friend who had left the village. And they kinda of reference the events later on in the episode of the events of the Sasuke retrieval arc. Well, they mildly reference in one conversation. Yeah, after they have their day of training, Baruto and Naruto go to Ichiro Ramen, and they have some ramen. Yep, and they go back to training, and, well, they come with the ingenious idea to sort of, well, because, well, they fell over, and Naruto goes, okay, why don't I draw a symbol of the hidden leaf symbol on, on Baruto's hand, the one that's bandaged, and try that. So they try out four hands, and it turns out, yeah, it does work. And then they try it again, and it gets close, but they don't pop it. Yep. And, of course, after the day, they said they go home, but they just want to get something to eat before they go home. So, Naruto are thinking, ramen, but they run into Team 10. Yep, their second parents in this arc. And this episode also features the return of Ashima to the series. Yep, he makes his first ever appearance in this series because, also like Jiraiya, he's also dead. Though the thing is, he died before Jiraiya. He died in the arc that, fe that features also the... The disappearance of Hidon and his partner, Harrison, I think his name is. Yes, this is well. This is set like a couple years before that. So they go to a barbecue place. Yeah, this is the same place which Team Ten frequently went to, both in the original Naruto anime and in Naruto Shippuden. They went here several times. Yep, they did. And it's nice to see this place again. I, as far as I can tell, in this series. This is the first time this particular restaurant has been seen. Mm -hmm. Each ramen itself was featured at least about three times this series so far. Barbecue. This is the first time the restaurant is fe featured. And of course, well, th there's a gag in here about because Choji eats so much that it nearly basically bankrupts Ashima like every time they go out to eat. I guess they have the update. Mm -hmm. And you have it where at this table you have. Choji sitting like on one end, he, well he's next to, I think he's six, just across from Ashima, and next to Ashima is Sukumaro and Naruto, on the other side it's Choji, I think it's Barto and Ino. As far as I can tell for these two, in present day these two have never interacted with each other at all. I mean, Barto has interacted frequently with Shikamaru, and there's no mention of the fact that he about his, is like, let's say his first meeting with Ashima, he just, Ashima just looks like a complete at random, and the episode's like, oh look, it's Ashima. Unlike in the case of Jiraiya, where it was complete shock, and he got a chance to meet somebody he actually had heard before. Ashima, as far as I can tell, I don't think he's ever heard of him before. He probably, I think he does know of him, probably because of, because he's best friend, because basically his daughter Mari, who's not been born yet in the series, not for about not for at least for two years. Yeah. So, he probably does know of him. And, but the thing is, he's never mentioned before at all. I mean, uh, Mari's frequently mentioned him, but not, not Konohamaru, not mentioned to Naruto. Bar yeah. I mean, it would be nice if they had like a brief exchange. I mean, they don't exchange a word of dialogue the whole episode. The one scene they're in together and there's no exchange of dialogue. I mean, at least Bar's will change dialogue with Eno, a character, like I said, has never interacted with him in present day. No. That's kind of the strange thing about Eno. I mean, the only character she interacted with in present day 
it's just been Naruto, Sai, her husband, her son, Inojin, and Baruto's sister. That's basically it. I mean, she has never talked before, and she gets along fine with him in this episode. I mean, they, they, they have a brief, they did see each other during the the Genny Assemble episode where they had to clean up a bathhouse because apparently Naruto was peeping on people, people on the women in the, in the bathhouse. Yeah. But in the case of this episode, they just are just having some some food and they go on to train the next day and they're training for a little while and that's when Rosaki shows up and starts this big brawl with them. There's also a side thing going on with Sasuke where Jiraiya kind of figures out that, well, this is Sasuke Uchiha, though he doesn't really officially confirm it. He does also make it things like, I won't delve into more of your identities if you tell me about or seek the information. Tell us about the teleportation jutsu. And he may know some other jutsu, but he doesn't doesn't really know about any other jutsu of his teleportation jutsu and his ability to steal chakra. He does kind of explain that, yes, the whole thing with Chevrolet Formers, that was a lie. But then protecting Naruto, that part was true. Mm -hmm. And then they go out and pretty much just go on battle him anyways. Though, apparently he's able to summon fire from him. And apparently Naruto doesn't need to point out though, like, first fire. And then we see Chidori. Though apparently Naruto doesn't point out, hey, that, that's a move my friend Sasuke and, my, and, my, and, and Kakashi Sensei knows. And the fire, he only knows like maybe two people who knows that, who also use fire. And that's just Sasuke and, well, Sasuke's brother, um, I'm trying to think, what was his name? The one who's evil. I'm trying to think, what was his name? It was, um, oh, I kind of forgot his name. Sasuke's brother. It was, um, oh, Atachi. Yeah. Only just him and Itachi were the two he knew at this point in time who knew how to use fire jutsu. Mm -hmm. I think maybe Kakashi knows it too, but I highly doubt he stole it from Kakashi because Kakashi surprisingly has not made appearance in this arc so far. Yeah, that's particularly very weird. I mean, we have appearance by almost all the Genin appeared at this period of time. Plus, of course, the appearances by Tsunade and Jiraiya and, of course, Ashima, but no, Koronai. Which is kind of surprising, no Cora and I in this so far in these episodes, and there's been no Kakashi at all. Yeah, those two were surprisingly absent from this for this particular episode. Yes, yeah, particularly very weird, and I think it's quite dumb that we have Ten Ten who show up in two episodes back, and her parents just a brief cameo. It's like, okay, why can't we have her in that scene? I don't know why, but yeah, they start to brawl with him, and well. And at one point during the fight, Jiraiya basically gets wounded, but I think the people who wrote this episode, okay, despite the keys here in the past, don't kill Jiraiya. They cannot kill him at all because he's supposed to die in Shippuden, so they can't kill him. So they can wound him, but he cannot be killed. But they probably have to make the wound disappear because they'll, he's only received two major wounds ever in his whole career. The mission is in Shippuden where... The other people gave him serious wounds. One was Sonati for him peeking at her. The other was basically him hit by Naruto during a two-year time skip. Two-and-a-half-year time skip when he got wounded when he was basically activated the the, the Nine-Tailed Cloak. Mm -hmm. Yep. Though I should also mention beginning the episode that Naruto and tried to patch things up. What happened with last week's episode? Well... Two episodes back, two weeks episode. Two episode came out two weeks ago because no new episode last week. Yeah, there was an article about it. There was nothing. I did hear something that where they were gonna take a break, but the rumor was what I heard take place. The rumor was gonna break up be after this arc was over with that they were going to take a break for one week. But no, they take a break after one thirty two. Yep, and then pretty much like, well. Also, the thing with Sakura is that despite the fact that Baruto kind of lied to her, but he wanted to go to, Sa to Sasuke himself about the letter, which she doesn't do in this episode. They might do it in next week's episode, but who knows? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the episode pretty much ends basically with, well, Ruchara basically wanted to about going to take about to take Naruto's chakra. But next episode should be quite interesting because continuation is fight.
It's a pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm looking forward to next week's episode. And as far as I know, no break next week. Okay. Now for new chapter manga, the Invisible Jutsu. First, we have this wonderful cover image, color image of Sadara and Mitsuke. Mm-hmm. Really good. Now the manga. Basically, it picks up kind of where the last chapter left off, where you have, well, the the Uzumaki house under the barrier. Shikamaru is going to we, we got to figure out how to get Bard good back. And he's Sasuke. And, of course, a guy shows up and says, well, we see dispatch. Sasuke's return. He see first injuries and is unconscious. What? Fortunately, medical units are pulling him out of critical condition, but no clues what it to him. We can only wait for him to heal us. Yeah, he was healed by his smoking hot wife. Yeah. Of course, yeah, they don't mention, oh yeah, he was healed by his wife. They don't mention, I'm like, you can tell by the flashback, yeah, he's being healed by his wife. Yep, who's worried about him. And then we cut to, well, Team 7 and Kawanki confronting this guy, who was a lot more tougher than the other vessel. So, well, Kawanki, you, you reached the only place with... You, Via t- space time jutsu. How did you get here? It's supposed to be quiet. I'll ask the questions. Where's Lord Seven? Says so your love's history. And of course, shows off the big urn he's in. It's like, what? He's nothing? The, the, the urn itself kind of looks like the same type of device that was used to hold Shikaku originally, before I was moving to Gara. Yeah, that's what the thing looks like. So, that's why the clock is inside. No idea. Not that I have any clue what's going on there, or you using it live. So he attempts to throw it, and basically ends my friend. It's like, apparently what opened. <laughs> apparently jogging on the seal. <laughs> yep, and of course, well, then you have Kwanke try to use his power to do it. He sends his lord, he sends Naruto with chakra. He's definitely loving her. First do anything. First, we got a deal with the enemy in the front of us. He apparently disappears. If you look around coming from beneath us and uses lava style plant branding blast and so Sa- accurates her sharing gun to detect where he is and even Kwanaki figures out where he is too so pretty much he tears up the ground apparently it's not even damage and then he looks around and then Baruto saves him from an attack Baruto you're right and there, we have Baruto's kar- karma. Seems Delta was telling the truth after all. You sh- and Baruto's like, you sure sneak around a lot for a big guy, you coward. Come on, then, you f- oh, you're full of hot air. Then he asked me twice, and of course he tries to act for particular shootings for in Baruto's wait, that broke you. Time to waste. Gotta help him. And he uses Versengon right on the guy, and he basically flies right into a wall, and then he heals into like, what? He's got a healing factor. Well, so that's the first thing. I'm sure it packs a punch. At least he feels pain. It's like, what? His wound heal. And of course, Kwanaki goes go after him. He activates his wave sign again. Don't know what he's doing. And Kwanaki just beats the crap out of him. Blasts him right through a freaking rock. Throws him around. And then, of course, we have... And he apparently looks like part of us... That's what you get for charging fools recklessly. And apparently he activates his karma to lift him up. Oh, he lifts himself up and basically punches Kwanaki in the face. And he mentions that Parto, son of, Parto, son of Okage, and Mawashiki's vessel. He's like, happy to meet you. Having this happy since Kwanaki first showed up. Mawashiki's vessel. Yeah, probably fell off on the bar. It's a movie where he basically got that particular seal. Thanks to you. The time limit that was urgently placed on our plans. Might as well been lifted. I'm eternally grateful. I'll take take you I'll take you back along with Kwanaki and treat you with care. What are you talking about? Wind style. Breakthrough. Yep. And it's basically Mitsuke basically cast that. He's like, bar to get Mitsuke. Sorry, you can't get rid of dark clouds from or mere wind. For your body, since you can't escape. 
Mitsuke tired of Orochimaru. Yeah, they already know that. So, he used a snake on him. Wraps him around like he's like like it's freaking handcuffs. And throws him around with the damn snake. And he bites him in the arm. Creates poisoning, of course. Then he casts the same hand sign. Don't know what this is. But draws the snakes. And then, of course, you know something was like... And, of course, some smoke. And then Sandor throws a freaking boulder at him. He's like, take, he's like this, take this. Yeah, and then he's like, Mitsuke, you grab Baruto. Let's retreat. Huh? They ran off. Except the hawk, except the hawk is still in my hands. You come back, Quanica, won't you? And, of course, Quanica's like, why'd you run off for abandoning the Hokage? You idiot would have been wiped out when you stayed. Some are saying, I won't rescue Lord Seven as badly as you do. I don't plan to. Tucking my tail for any leader. So what now? They have a plan? Figure out Jutsu first. Best for teamwork. So, we three men sell. Sell, sell number seven. Plus, Kwanki makes four. The teamwork of our revamped cell seven. Let the counterattack begin. Next chapter begins coming out in December 20th. Yeah. Pretty good chapter. It actually does advance this plot really much forward. It's something that we say, we say briefly in Hidley Village, and we spend the whole chapter with basically Team 7. Though they apparently added Kawanaki to the team. Okay. At least you know where Naruto is, so they're going to retrieve him probably next chapter. But, wait a month. Excuse me. I always got praised the fact that this chapter is longer than, let's say, the recent chapter that came up for Black Butler. Black Butler, the way his chapters are released, it seems as though that these chapters should release weekly instead of monthly because they're only about 15 pages. I mean, are you saying that the writer Black Butler can't bother to come and see weekly or at least produce more pages for his for his chapters of his manga? It's kind of the same thing with D. Grayman. Comes out three months and the thing is like really, really short. Wait, three months is the damn chapter comes released and it's really short. At least in the case of Barto, it's like 40 pages, which is pretty reasonable. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. But this chapter is pretty good. But the whole thing about Inv Invincible Jutsu, I would say it's probably something that deals with this new guy popped up from last chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we get this chapter, roughly a 9 out of 10. It It's really good. Can't wait for the next chapter, okay? So yeah, that's it for this particular review, and that's the last review I'm going to do today because... I'm going to save my two movie review, my next movie I was planning to do today for tomorrow because we'll have run out of time. That's all I plan to do today, okay? But do some next few, which will be tomorrow, which will be hopefully be two movie reviews tomorrow if I get a chance to. If not, probably save Tuesday, okay? Do some next few. Bye.